Engineers, we're known for problem solving. We've always tried to solve problems and we typically grew up that way, trying to fix things, how things come together and looking at how things work. So whether we're designing a building, a bridge or that next big infrastructure, we're thinking typically just beyond just the structural engineering, but also how it fits into the environment and how we can potentially achieve the best for the project. When I think about where the profession is going, it feels like we're starting to lose our way. Some of it's our fault, some of it isn't. My name's Brendan, your structural engineer. Let's get into it. When you hear about structural engineers, especially in the media, it's about something that has particularly failed. So it's always these negative stories of bridges failed, a building has collapsed. Something has happened that led to catastrophic consequences. When something's gone well, you never hear about us. We don't get our name on that fancy building like the architects do. There's never a lot of positive knowledge about what we do and how we shape the environment. It's always negative. And it's never about all the good times or how we've pushed stuff in the correct direction. So we need to make sure that we're speaking up a bit more about the benefits that we can have and not just necessarily stepping up when something has actually gone wrong. With the correct guidance, our expertise can make sure that we're leading projects down the right path, making those correct decisions about structural safety, about how things come together, and then reducing the body carbon through some smart decisions. But because of the way we've branded ourselves and the way we've pushed back from trying to lead projects, we're not often at the table where we can make those big decisions. You see, typically the way we've actually structured things, we're further and further away from the money. The closer you are to the money, the closer you can help make those decisions and make those big changes. See, an engineer, we're typically hired by an architect. That architect is engaged by a developer. That developer then hands it off to some sales agents, some rental agents, or even some real estate agents that then sell it on to the end client. So we're many stages removed from where the money actually comes into the project. So we're very much down the pecking chain. Did you know that the average real estate agent can upwards of 2% on the sale price that they're doing? Where us as engineers, we're lucky to get 0.2% of the construction costs, which is substantially less. So despite us taking a bigger risk, we're taking substantially less pay for that same benefit. And then sometimes we wonder why, why is engineering standards dropped? If you buy a car for $2 and the wheels fall off, you're not surprised. Yes, it's beholden on every engineer to make sure the building is safe, but some people don't do their jobs correctly. But if quality of standards have dropped because fees have dropped, then you've got to look back and see where have we lost our way and how can we achieve something better? And we've got to bring up the tail on showing our benefits through education and in the project that we lead. We're only good as the last project that we've worked on. And if we can make that good impression, people can realize that good engineering is an investment and not a cost. Good engineering will lead to better project outcomes, will lead to less problems on site, will lead to stuff getting built quicker so you can get into the building faster, will lead to reduced carbon that's emitted through not sizing elements that are too big just because you're trying to hit a time and deadline budget. You're making sure that your structure is substantially cheaper by value engineering in the correct ways. A good engineer knows where they need to put the money in and where they can pull the money out from. So there's some things that you want additional robustness because of some catastrophic consequences. There's other areas where you can pull a substantial amount of money out to get to that correct answer. And engineering is more than just creating boxes as that's what we've typically seen in the past. We can make some beautiful, amazing things, especially when we have full control and help full confidence in what we're doing. Engineers are more worried about risk mitigation, making sure that they've got stuff done correctly, which they all need to do, but potentially adding additional redundancies in structures that you do not need to have. Sticking with the traditional methods instead of looking at different ways, as a lot of people get a lot of pushback, especially if we don't educate them in the correct way. And we spend more time just trying to pump out that work, getting it to the correct answer and getting it to the deliverables instead of spending the time and passion that we have for it, looking at the art of engineering as opposed to the, just the deliverables of getting that correct answer out. Yeah, some projects, they don't need that. They just need a quick answer. You just need to put a structure together. But there's other projects where if you push it in the right way, you can have substantial benefits and leading down the correct path. And this needs to substantially change. And the only way that we can do this is by increasing our fees and showing the benefits that we can bring to projects. Not one person can change the way that society is going. Not one person can change the engineering community as a whole. But as a collective, if we speak up, if we promote the right people, if you don't want to be speaking up in front of people, just 
reaching out and sending this video to other people. And I think at this moment in time where engineers are being looked to more and more in the world to help come up with the solutions that we need, and I think there's no better example than Tanya at the lead of this incredible organization of engineers and making sure that as a society of problem solvers that we're just solving those problems with compassion, with equity, and with incredible competence and with courage. Or promoting and amplifying the voice of people like Tanya, the current iStruck D president, who's gone around about empowering and the empowered benefits of structural engineers and the benefits that we can have to just society. We need more leaders like this, willing to speak up and show the benefits that we have. Speaking in front of not only just structural engineers, speaking in front of architects, speaking in front of developers and coming together about how we can bring a lot more than the table than what we have been doing and how we should be sitting at that table to help guide down the correct path. We have a way of thinking about how structures come together that is unique, that allows us to have a problem solving ability that others don't have. So we need people to be able to lead with purpose and have their voice understood and having people help promote their voice out to as much as possible. Instead of saying engineering is a cost, you invest in engineering. Good engineering is beneficial not only for you, for the project, how the project comes together and the longevity of that project. Just simply commenting on this video would do it wonders. So we need a lot more people to speak up that want to, but also supporting them and helping push that voice further. It's not just about a single voice, it's not just about a single person or a single organization. It's us as a collective pushing the passion that we have, educating people on even just simple projects about the benefits that we can bring to the table and how it leads to better decision making. And if we don't do it soon, it's gonna get harder and harder to be to that table. So let's change the conversation. Let's promote it towards a positive instead of the negative that it currently is today. And if you did enjoy this video, I've got another video here about the biggest mistake that structural engineers can make that lead us down the wrong path. And if you're interested in supporting the channel, there's two ways that you can do this. You can either become a YouTube or Patreon members. Without the support of my YouTube and Patreon members, this type of content would not be possible. As always, stay curious and I hope to see you next week. Bye.